Python provides a small collection of native types. While these alone are not sufficient for data analysis and numerical programming, they are commonly used. We will focus on five key types. Python supports two types for numeric data, floats, which use an approximation to represent values with a fixed precision irrespective of their magnitude, and integers, which are exact but cannot directly represent decimal numbers. Strings are used for a variety of tasks, such as naming figures or labeling datasets. Lists are containers for other Python objects. Lists can grow by appending single items or be extended with other lists. Items are retrieved from lists using their position in the list. Tuples are a close cousin of a list with one key difference. Tuples cannot be changed once initialized. Dictionaries are key value stores that hold other Python objects and support lookup using meaningful keys. Start by opening Lesson 2. Before describing the key types, we need to cover variable naming. Variable names in Python can contain any combination of letters, lower or uppercase, numbers, and underscores, although they cannot begin with a number. Names should not normally start or end with an underscore. These patterns are reserved for private or special variables in Python. Any number that contains a decimal is automatically a floating point number. In most cases, you will write a digit to the right of the decimal. This isn't required and 3.0 is the same as 3 dot. Integers are numbers that do not have a decimal. There are no limits to the range of a Python integer, and so you could enter a very large number. Create the variable scalar float as a floating point number with a decimal, and scalar int as an integer. We will frequently use the print function display output. Jupyter Notebooks only show the final line of a cell when the final line does not assign the value to a variable. Print lets us see the value of multiple variables in a single cell or to see the value of any variable. In the simple form that we use here, the print function will show a string representation of a single Python variable. Press the play button to run the cell, which creates the variables and prints their values. Strings are entered using quotes. You can use either double quotes or single quotes, but they must match. We enter this string using both set of quotation marks. String concatenation uses the plus symbol to add strings, and strings can be repeated using multiplication. F strings are like standard strings, except they are prefixed by an F. The key feature of an F string is the ability to include variables using curly braces. F strings are equivalent to the string component concatenated with the string representation of a variable. The string representation of a variable is produced using the function str, where the variable is the only input to this function. Here we create two strings using the two different quote markers. These are identical, and the choice of marker is personal. Next, we use F strings to pretty print the output of scalar float and scalar int. Python will automatically convert the variable in braces to a string. Finally, we create two strings, first and second, and print the sum of the two. Summing the string creates a new string. We could have alternatively assigned the sum to a new variable. Lists are containers for other objects. 
A list can hold any Python object, and so are heterogeneous by default. Lists are initialized using square brackets. A pair of brackets with no contents initializes an empty list. Lists can also be initialized using existing Python objects. Lists are commonly encountered in numerical Python as basic representations of arrays. A single list containing numerical values is like a one-dimensional array. A list of lists is used to represent a two-dimensional array, where the inner lists are treated as rows. Items are accessed in lists by their position. Python is zero-indexed, and so the first element is zero, the second element is one, and so on. Blocks of items in a list are selected using a slice. New elements are added to a list using the append method. Elements can be removed from the list using the remove method, and lists can be extended with other lists using the extend method. Here, we create a list from the two scalar values created earlier. Printing this list shows its contents, the value of the variables, and not their name, and printed lists are demarcated using square brackets. Append is used to add a single item to a list. Here, we append the string created earlier to the list. Printing shows the list contains three values. Items are selected using square brackets, followed by a single integer. Lists are zero-based, and so LST bracket 1 selects the second element, the integer 31415, from the list. Next, we will see how we use a special object in Python, known as a slice, to subset the list. Slices are widely used in numerical Python to subset lists, NumPy arrays, and pandas data frames and series. The basic syntax of a slice uses two integer values, start and stop. This two argument form selects all elements beginning with start and continuing until stop, but importantly does not include stop. In other words, the slice start colon stop selects element start, start plus one, start plus two, and so on, until stop minus one. There are two other common forms of a slice. The most common omits start and only uses stop. This is identical to using a slice that starts at zero and ends with stop. The second specifies only start and selects all elements in the list or array beginning with start until the end of the list or array. This is equivalent to using the slice start colon len list. Len is a built-in Python function that returns the number of elements in a list or other list-like object. Here we use a slice to select the first two elements from the list using the slice colon two. While this is the same as using the slice zero colon two, it is common to omit the leading zero in a slice. Slices also support negative indices, which select starting from the end. This example selects the final two elements from the list. This is true irrespective of the length of the list. Next, we create a list of lists only where the elements contained in the outer list are also lists. Selecting elements from the outer list selects one of the inner lists. Selecting the second element from the second row produces five. Note that list selection can be implemented directly using multiple square braces. Tuples are closely related to lists with one key difference. A tuple cannot be changed once created. This property is known as immutability. Tuples are created using parentheses. Note that when a tuple contains a single element, it must also contain a comma. 
failing to include the comma would only add parentheses around an item, which has no effect. Multi-item tuples are identical to multi-item lists, only using parentheses instead of square brackets. Item selection in tuples is identical to selection in lists, and both scalars and slices can be used. We start by creating a tuple containing three values, 1, 2.0, and the string C. We can select the string using bracket 2, which selects the third element. We can also select from the end using negative indices. Using tuple bracket minus 1 selects the final element in the list. Here we convert the list of lists to a tuple of tuples. The elements of the list are selected using scalar selection. These are converted to tuples using the tuple function. The outer tuple is constructed using parentheses. Printing the tuple of tuples shows its values, and the parentheses in the string representation indicate that this is a tuple. Converting back to a list of lists is virtually identical, only replacing the tuple command with list and using square brackets in place of parentheses. Dictionaries, like lists, are containers for other objects. Objects are stored in a dictionary as key-value pairs. Technically, a key is any hashable object which includes strings. Dictionaries are initialized using curly braces. An empty dictionary is just a pair of braces. A one-element dictionary uses a colon to separate the key from its associated value. Multi-item dictionaries use the colon to separate keys from their values and commas to separate key-value pairs. Elements are added to an existing dictionary using brackets to store the key and equals to assign the value. If the key is already in the dictionary, then the existing value is replaced. Elements are deleted using the del keyword. Existing elements are accessed using brackets and the key. Dictionaries are created using curly braces. Let us start by creating an empty dictionary and printing it. Next, we create a dictionary containing three key value pairs to store the float, the int, and the string. Printing the dictionary shows its contents. Note that the dictionary is indicated by curly braces in the string representation. Lookup uses the key to access its associated value. We can assign a value to a key using the equal operator. This overwrites the value in float, which we can see by printing the dictionary. The final problem examines adding a new key value pair and deleting an existing value. When assigning to a key, the key is created in the dictionary if it does not exist. We can see that better float is now contained in the dictionary. The del keyword removes a key. Deleting float from the dictionary removes the item.
Here we have focused on a small number of native Python types that are frequently used in numerical Python. The key primitive types are float and end, which store numeric values, and strings, which are used to hold text. Lists, tuples, and dictionaries are used to hold collections of other objects. Lists and tuples use positional indexing, and dictionaries are a key value store where values are looked up by their associated key.